Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are continuing with our Chapter 11 Gas Law Notes. So today I'm going to talk about Charles and Gala Sachs Laws. So we'll start with Charles. So uh, Jacques Charles was a French physicist, and he was the first to fill a balloon with hydrogen gas and make a solo flight. Fortunately for him, he survived because, as you may recall, hydrogen gas uh, tends to go boom very easily if it encounters any source of energy. Um, but anywho, uh, Jacques Charles was the first one to fill a balloon with hydrogen gas and make a flight. Remember that hydrogen gas is much less dense um, than air. So he showed that the volume of a gas increases as the temperature increases. And again, um, his experiments were all conducted at constant pressure. So as we go through the gas laws, you'll notice that uh, typically each gas law involves holding one of the variables constant. And in the case of Charles's law, it is pressure. So if you think about it, um, Charles's law explains uh, a lot of why hot air balloons work. Um, if you've ever been in a hot air balloon or wondered how they work, um, there's a basket and then there's a big old cloth balloon. And at the top of the balloon is a hole um, or a flap. And so what they do is they use a big flame gun and they heat the air up inside of the balloon. And what happens is as the temperature increases, the volume increases. It's a direct relationship. And so as the volume increases, the particles of the gas are farther apart. So they're less dense than the surrounding air and it goes up. In order to come back down again, what they do is they lift the flap at the top. That allows the warm air to expand out cold air would then come rushing in and the density would increase and the balloon would come down. So the way that they control the altitude in a hot air balloon is really taking advantage of Charles's law. So what Charles did was a whole bunch of experiments where he measured the volume of a gas as he increased its temperature. And what he determined graphically is that it is a direct relationship. It's linear. Um, so you'll recall earlier this year when I first mentioned uh, absolute zero and the Kelvin scale, I pointed out that if you uh, plot the volume of a gas versus its temperature, the point where the volume of the gas goes to zero corresponds to a temperature of negative 273.15 degrees C. And this is how we determined what absolute zero is uh, by repeating these experiments with every gas that we could get our hands on and determining that the temperature at which the volume of a gas goes to zero always corresponds to that same temperature of negative 273.15 degrees C, which is our absolute zero. So again, as temperature drops, the volume decreases, and it is, as you can see here, a linear relationship. So this was repeated many times with uh, many different gases. And again, as it shows here, the point where the volume goes to zero is always the same. Uh, so again, looking here, you'll see that uh, for a variety of gases, if you plot their volume versus their temperature, here in degree C, the point where the volume of the gas goes to zero corresponds to the x-intercept, and that corresponds to that negative 273.15 degrees C. So for Charles's law, um, it's basically the relationship is that a volume of a gas is directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature. And we can write that V is equal to some constant times T. And so our constant here is pressure and the number of moles of a gas, the amount of the gas. So we're talking about a particular sample of a gas. So we can rewrite that equation as V over T is equal to B, where B is our constant. So then the next gas law that we talk about is Gala-Sachs law. 
and Joseph Galesac discovered or determined that the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature, where volume remains constant. So when I talk about Galesac's law, um, Recall with uh, Charles's law, I pointed out that Charles's law explains why a hot air balloon flies. Galesac's law explains why it's a bad idea to, for instance, put a can of beans into the oven and heat it up without poking a hole in it, or why it's a bad idea to throw away an aerosol can of, say, hairspray into an open fire because the volume is constant. And so as the temperature of your can of hairspray, for instance, increases, eventually the pressure would reach a point that would exceed what the can could withstand, and it would go boom. So again, Gay-Lussac's law can be thought of as the reason it's a bad idea to heat a closed container of anything. So the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature at constant volume. And we can write that equation as P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So that is going to be it for today. Uh, stay tuned for two more videos where well, I will explain how to solve problems using these two gas laws. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.